My name is Lance Leachman. This is Purebred Cattle Management, and today we're going to discuss expected progeny differences, or EPDs. An expected progeny difference, also known as an EPD, is a way for us to compare animals genetically across a variety of different environments. So it removes the environmental component of an animal's performance and allows us to directly assess the genetic merit differences between two animals. And EPDs are calculated from a variety of information, but typically that'll include performance data, pedigree information, and also the contemporary group information that an animal finds itself in related to other animals. Uh, typically we express the EPD on the same scale or the same unit of measure as what the trait itself is measured on. For instance, an EPD for birth weight would be expressed in pounds or kilograms. An EPD for ribeye area would be expressed in square centimeters or square inches as it is actually measured on the animal itself or the phenotype itself. A well, large contemporary group is a great asset to genetic evaluation because if we have a large contemporary group with a large number of progeny sired by a variety of bulls, we have a lot of variation in the genetic merit of those animals. So if we were able to compare a large contemporary group with a high number of animals, we can accurately find very distinguishable differences between all those animals in a particular environment, which is our contemporary group. So we fix the environment, we provide the same nutrition and conditions for all of those animals to develop in. And if we have a large number of animals, we're going to find a lot of differences between them. And that can be compared with the circumstance where we have a small contemporary group of say five heifers, and they all come from the same sire, we don't have a lot of variability to try and assess the genetic differences between those animals. So for instance, if we have a weaning weight of sire A for 55 pounds, and we have a weaning weight EPD for sire B of 45 pounds, there's a 10 pound difference in those two values and therefore we would expect the calves or the progeny of sire A to be 10 pounds heavier on the average at weaning than what we'd expect for sire B. And that basically shows that there's going to be a large difference in performance values and accordingly there will be differences in the weights of those cattle and the profitability or revenue generated by those cattle due to being heavier at weaning. For birth weight EPDs, the magnitude of the differences is much smaller than, say, for yearling weights or for weaning weights, but it's still expressed on a pounds or a kilogram uh, scale. So a birth weight EPD value, whether it be uh, two or three kilograms, is expressed in the same units uh, universally. If we were to take Sire A, for instance, and he has a birth weight EPD of either uh, of five kilograms or, say, five pounds, and we have Sire B, whose EPD for birth weight is two pounds, uh, there's a four pound difference between those values. We would expect Sire A's calves on the average to be about four to five pounds heavier when they're born than those of Sire B. So that could be something we'd prefer in a circumstance where maybe our cows are already easy calving and we'd like to add more performance, or that could be viewed as a negative in that we have a cow herd that already has plenty of performance and maybe is higher at birth than what we'd already prefer to be. So you need to identify the direction of the trait that you'd like to progress in as to which animal or bull you'd like to select upon. Well, EPD accuracy is a measure of the confidence we have in that animal that we are selecting upon to transmit its genetics to the next generation. And EPD accuracy is provided in a value that theoretically ranges from zero to one on all animals. And you'll notice usually that young animals that have no progeny will have a low accuracy value in the magnitude of one or 0.1 to 10%. Animals that may have one calf crop will move up possibly to the magnitude of 0.3 or 0.35. And then as you have animals that have been around and produced hundreds or thousands of progeny, the accuracy value for those animals will reach a magnitude of 0.8 to 0.9. And that simply says that if we compare an animal with an accuracy of 0.2, which may be a young sire that we'll identify as sire A, and we have a mature sire 
who has an accuracy value of 0.8, and we identify him as Sire B, we're a lot more uh, confident in Sire B to impact his calves in a very predictable manner than what we are in the younger sire. The younger sire just isn't proven enough for us to have a lot of confidence or sureness in how his calves are going to perform because we don't have enough measurements on them at the particular time that we're selecting. Yes, it does change over time as long as the animal is used in a breeding program. Uh, we could have an animal that's born and never breeds a cow and that accuracy won't change just because we don't collect a lot of phenotypic information on its progeny later in life. If an animal is used on a large number of females throughout its lifetime, it is certain that its accuracy of breeding value is going to improve. And another critical point to remember when looking at accuracy is that the accuracy has no reflection on the genetic value of the animal itself. So a low accuracy animal doesn't mean that that animal isn't superior for a particular trait. It just means that we aren't very confident that that animal is superior for that specific trait yet. Although if we do collect more records on that animal, and that does indeed prove to be the case, uh, we will have a higher accuracy value later on. Well, the biggest advantage of an EPD is that it allows you to focus on genetic selection rather than trying to look at what environmental impact you're having on the performance of your cow herd. So it, it makes it simpler to try and assess the genetic differences between cattle. And I think the utility of an EPD is very widespread. I think at this point purebred breeders have a better understanding because that's how they select the animals that they're going to generate seed stock from. But I think an EPD or an expected progeny difference is equally as useful to commercial operations uh, once they're educated on the fundamentals of how they work and how they need to utilize them. So in that circumstance where you have a commercial producer that wants to generate faster growing progeny, he could certainly select on a weaning weight or yearling EPD for a bull that he finds at a production sale. And if he finds a bull that suits his criteria or is very optimum for those traits, he might want to buy that bull. So I think it's got equal utility for purebred and commercial operations so well as everybody knows to use those values and use EPDs in the correct manner. All the tools that we have available to us in breeding cattle selection and mating need to be weighted according to their utility. I think producers may get caught up on not utilizing EPDs or using them uh, too proficiently. They are a tool and depending on what the goals are of your breeding objective, they need to be utilized accordingly. There are a lot of other circumstances you need to look at. There are no EPDs for a variety of traits and those are very important traits. For instance, structural soundness or docility uh, within the Hereford breed at this point doesn't have an EPD to measure upon. So people need to remain practical in their objectives as far as creating cattle that will work in a variety of conditions and maybe not focus on EPDs or their utility but use them as a tool when they're necessary to improve a trait that they need to use.